Ready? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of Edenwald. My name is Cheryl Rosenfeld. I'm the dietitian here at Edenwald, and I'd like to speak with you today about falls prevention with good nutrition. Falls are very common and occur in more than one third of people aged 65 or older. People who fall once are more than two to three times likely to fall again. Most fractures by older adults are caused by falls. Direct medical costs for fall injuries in the United States totals $34 billion annually. Nutrition plays an important role in the prevention of falls. Falls are not an inevitable result of aging. Malnutrition and sarcopenia play a big role in the increased risk for falls. Sarcopenia is the loss of muscle mass. After age 70, there is approximately a 15% muscle loss per decade. If you have a period of inactivity, such as a hospitalization and bed rest, you are at greatest risk for muscle loss. It's possible to lose up to 10% of leg muscle mass in 10 days of inactivity. Muscle loss often leads to diminished strength and decreased activity levels and can contribute to mobility issues, osteoporosis, frailty, and loss of physical function and independence. The weakness that accompanies sarcopenia can dramatically increase the risk of falls for older adults. One half of all accidental deaths among people over the age of 65 are related to falls. Therefore, it's very important to maintain muscle mass for independence, mobility, and normal walking speed. Muscle mass can be maintained by paying attention to both nutrition and physical activity. Ryan will be addressing the physical activity component, or he already has, in a previous presentation. I would like to address how you can maintain muscle mass with good nutrition. It's important to consume an adequate amount of protein spaced evenly throughout the day to meet your protein needs. Unfortunately, only 15% of older adults consume 75% of the protein that they need. When less protein is consumed than is needed, there is muscle breakdown and muscle loss. Muscle growth requires adequate protein intake and exercise. Consuming 20 to 30 grams of protein or approximately three or four ounces of meat or high protein foods, depending upon your body size, three times a day can help increase muscle growth. Protein contains amino acids. The amino acid leucine is especially beneficial to muscle growth. Some people ask me, if leucine is beneficial for muscle growth, can I take it in a pill form? You should not take high doses of amino acids for long periods of time. Very high doses of leucine may cause hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. It may also cause pellagra, which is a disease with low levels of niacin, also known as vitamin B3. Symptoms of pellagra include lesions of the skin, hair loss, and gastrointestinal problems. But getting leucine from foods in your diet is safe and healthy. Foods that are high in leucine include chicken, beef, pork, fish, including tuna fish, tofu, canned beans, including baked beans, milk, cheese, squash seeds. We have here, you can see a container of squash seeds from butternut squash and eggs. The best response to consume protein foods is to consume them 60 to 90 minutes before you exercise. Now I spoke about squash seeds before. 
Squash seeds I'm referring to come from the winter squashes, butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash. People usually scoop these seeds out and throw them away, but they're really throwing away great nutrition. I recommend that you scoop out the seeds and you have them for a crunchy snack that's far superior to chips or pretzels. You can roast squash seeds by scooping the seeds out of a winter squash. You can remove the pulp or you don't even have to remove the pulp. You can roast them with the pulp. You can rinse them off if you want. Toss them lightly with olive oil. Spread them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Sprinkle on some sea salt if you're not on a low salt diet and roast them in the oven at 350 degrees until they start to turn brown and crispy. I have some other tips for adding protein to your diet. You can grate cheese or you can buy pre-grated cheese and you can add it to vegetables, salads, potatoes, rice, noodles, and casseroles for an additional protein benefit. You can also take hard boiled eggs, chop them up and add them to your salads for additional protein. Each hard boiled egg contains seven grams of protein. Consider Greek yogurt over regular yogurt. Greek yogurt is very high in protein. You can eat it alone or you can add it to fruit or cereal. Add peanut butter to sandwiches, put it on toast, crackers or muffins. You can use peanut butter as a dip for vegetables or fruit. My favorite snack is sliced apple slices with dipped in peanut butter. Or you could also take baby carrots and dip that in peanut butter. You can add a scoop of powdered milk or whey protein powder to each cup of milk that you drink, or you can stir it into hot cereal. You can add nuts, seeds, or wheat germ to fruit, cereal, ice cream, and yogurt. And finally, you can add beans and lentils to soups and salads. In addition to protein, vitamin D has been shown to impact muscle strength. Low blood levels of vitamin D are associated with low muscle strength and falls. Vitamin D deficiency is defined as a vitamin D level less than 30 nanomoles per liter. Your physician can check your vitamin D level to see if it's low and replete it with therapeutic doses of vitamin D. The recommended dietary allowance, the RDA, for someone who does not have a vitamin D deficiency is 600 international units per day for adults 51 to 70 and 800 international units per day for adults over the age of 70. Most multivitamins, especially those designed for adults over 50, contain 400 to 800 international units of vitamin D. Some of the protein foods I mentioned earlier are also high in vitamin D. That would include salmon, sardines, herring, canned tuna, and egg yolks. Actually, in an egg, the vitamin D is in the yolk and the protein is in the egg white. So it's a good thing to eat the whole egg. Also, there's a lot of vitamin D in mushrooms if you wanna find a low source food that's high in vitamin D. Containing adequate vitamin D can go a long way in preventing falls. Hydration is another important factor in reducing the risk of falls. Drinking enough water is important for everyone, but especially for older adults who are at greater risk for dehydration. A UCLA study found that 40% of seniors may be chronically underhydrated. Older adults are more likely to become dehydrated because they naturally have less water in their bodies. They are also likely to have health conditions or take medicines that increase their risk for dehydration, such as diuretics, which is blood pressure medication that flushes water from the body. In addition, seniors are less sensitive to the feeling of being thirsty, have a decreased ability to keep fluid levels in balance in the body, have less efficient kidneys, which causes urine to contain more water, and often seniors take medications that cause side effects like diarrhea or excessive sweating, which also puts you at risk for dehydration. 
Dehydration increases the risk of falls because it can cause hypotension, which is low blood pressure. It can cause lightheadedness and dizziness. Dehydration can cause confusion, postural hypotension, which is when your blood pressure drops when you stand up, and it can cause delirium. All of these things can contribute to falls. How much fluid do you need each day? Fluid requirement varies from person to person, especially accounting for health conditions like congestive heart failure and medication use like diuretics. Men need slightly more fluid each day than women. Hot, dry weather and exercise also affects your fluid needs. About 20% of our fluid needs are met through the fluid content in our food. The rest has to come from beverages. You can determine if you are adequately hydrated by looking at the color of your urine. If you are well hydrated, your urine will be clear or pale yellow. If you are dehydrated, your urine will be orange or dark yellow. I can calculate your fluid requirement for you if you email me at crosenfeld at edenwald.org or call my office at 410-339-6029. I'll have to ask you a few questions about your weight, about medications you're taking, certain conditions that you might have to determine what your fluid requirement is. If you call my office and I'm not there, leave a message and I'll return your call. I make sure to meet my fluid requirement each day by carrying a fluid, a water bottle with me wherever I go. This is my hydro flask, which I ordered from Amazon. Uh, it's a 24 ounce water bottle. It's stainless steel inside, so it doesn't absorb any odors and it keeps my water ice cold for 24 hours. I put this water in here this morning at 5.30 and you can still hear the ice rattling around in there. And it has a nice handy loop for carrying it. And it has a wide mouth, so it's easy to insert ice cubes. Also easy to clean. But you can purchase any water bottle as long as you keep water with you because everyone, all senior citizens, pretty much don't have the thirst sensation that we had when we were younger. So when I drink my hydro flask for the day, I know that I've, I've satisfied at least one third of my fluid requirement. I need about 64 ounces a day. Then we have coffee cups. This is a 12 ounce coffee cup, so I would need about three more of these. I challenge everyone who's listening to this broadcast to record how much fluid you drink over the next 24 hours. I'd be curious to find out how much you're actually drinking if you're aware of how much you're drinking or how little you may be drinking. Meeting your fluid needs takes some planning. You can satisfy your fluid requirement with water, juice, sports beverages like Gatorade or Powerade, decaffeinated coffee, tea, or soda, popsicles, ice cream, jello, and soup. A bowl of soup at Edenwald will provide you with about six ounces of fluid. People sometimes ask me if Ensure satisfies their fluid requirements. So this is an eight ounce box of Ensure Plus. You may have Ensure Plus in bottles in your apartment. Also comes in eight ounce servings. 75% of Ensure is water. So if you drink an eight ounce carton of Ensure Plus, you are getting six ounces of water. Vitamin B12 deficiency can also contribute to falls. Vitamin B12 deficiency is common in older adults. People at risk for vitamin B12 deficiency don't get enough from their diet or they are unable to absorb enough from the food they eat. Those at greatest risk are people who have had a portion of their bowel removed, we call it a bowel resection, people on metformin for diabetes, people on a vegan diet, and people on long-term antacid drugs for heartburn. A vitamin B12 deficiency can leave you feeling dizzy. It can affect your balance and coordination and make you prone to falling. If you suspect that you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, you can have your fish physician check your vitamin B12 level. If you do have a physician a, a deficiency, you can be treated with vitamin B12 pills or vitamin B12 injections. You can increase the vitamin B12 in your diet 
by consuming beef, milk, yogurt, eggs, chicken, clams, mussels, oysters, and sardines. And for people who are on a vegan diet, if you eat some of those meat analogs and you look at the package, you'll notice that a lot of them are fortified with vitamin B12. Another aspect that can affect your risk for falling would be your vision. People who have low vision or vision problems are at greater risk for falling. Vitamin A or beta carotene helps protect the cornea. It is essential for good vision. Protecting your vision with good nutrition can help to prevent falls. When you were growing up, your mother probably said, eat your carrots, they're good for your eyes. Yes, your mother knew what she was talking about because carrots are high in beta carotene. Other fruits and vegetables that are high in beta carotene include sweet potatoes, butternut squash, spinach, kale, cantaloupe, peas, broccoli, and apricots. So basically, if you think about the orange fruits and vegetables, I'm not talking about citrus fruit, but other orange fruits and vegetables, most of them are going to be high in beta carotene. Low vision is another risk factor for falls, so nourishing your eyes with good nutrition and getting regular vision checks are another part of a falls prevention program. Your BMI or your body mass index can also have an effect on your risk for falls. A study in the Journal of the American Geriatric Society found that adults with a BMI of 30 or greater were more likely to fall than those with a BMI within normal limits. The incidence of falls is found to increase as the BMI increases. Those with a BMI of 30 to 34 were 12% more likely to fall than the rest of the population. Those with a BMI of 35 to 39 were 26% more likely to fall than the rest of the population. And a BMI of 40 or greater increases your risk of falling by 50%. There was a significant association between a more sedentary lifestyle and increasing BMI. Obese adults were 1.9 times more likely to sit for more than eight hours per day on weekdays, and they were 1.3 times more likely to experience problems walking. Obese adults were more likely to suffer from arthritis, diabetes, and a previous stroke. All of these are risk factors for falls. A BMI of less than 19, which puts you in the underweight range, can also put you at risk for falls if it is accompanied by frailty, sarcopenia, weakness, and problems with gait and balance. For older adults, it is now recommended that you maintain your BMI between 25 and 27. Maintaining a healthy BMI can go a long way toward protecting you from falls. And finally, I wanted to speak about self-care for caregivers. Some of you are caring for a husband or a wife in your apartment. Some of you have spouses in assisted living or in the comprehensive care units at Edenwald. And some of you have spouses who are currently in the hospital. I've received many calls from independent living residents asking me to cancel their spouse's meal delivery because they're in the hospital. But then some of you also ask me to cancel your meal delivery. When I ask you, what are you going to eat? The response is usually, oh, I'll eat something in the apartment. I have no appetite. It's very stressful to have a loved one in the hospital. Stress is a great appetite suppressant, but it is essential that you continue to focus on your own nutrition and hydration as you wait for your loved one to return home. Your loved one will rely on you for strength to help them in healing and rehab at home. If you allow yourself to become run down and malnourished, you will lose muscle strength. You will not be able to care for your spouse when they return home, and you will put yourself at risk for a fall and a fracture. So we gave everyone the ability to um, send me emails if they had any questions pertaining to, to this um, lecture. I did get one email. Um, 
We are on Zoom. I don't see any participants on Zoom. I think most of you are watching this um, on channel 84. So if you want to send me any questions after the lecture is over, you can send them to my email at crosenfeld at edenwell.org, or you could call my office at 410-339-6029, and I can answer your questions that way. The one question that was sent in to me by email in advance is from Mrs. R.G. Mrs. R.G. writes, I always order diet pie or other diet dessert, not puddings. I have no medical reason for doing this, except I'm assuming the diet has a lot less calories. You are correct. I am weight conscious. I would like to know your thoughts about this. So the regular desserts here at Edenwald are sweetened with sugar. The diet desserts are sweetened with Splenda, which is an artificial sweetener. Sugar has 15 calories per teaspoon, while Splenda has two calories per teaspoon. So the diet desserts will be less calories. Diet desserts are likely to not cause you to gain weight, and this will contribute to a healthier BMI, and having a healthier BMI reduces your risk for falls. So the desired diet desserts are a good idea. Okay, uh, Ryan has a question, he's over here. Okay. Right. If, I mean, if you're doing strength training, yeah, then. Well, you just want to make sure that you're that you that you consume enough protein before your workout, and then within 30 minutes after the workout, you should consume some carbohydrate, because you'll also be burning carbohydrate. I just recommend for seniors that they that take a multivitamin that's usually there for people 50 and over. I'm not a big proponent of individual vitamins because sometimes if you if you take an excess of one vitamin, it can create an imbalance with the other vitamins, which is why multivitamins are in a specific are in a specific balance. Also, you don't want to consume high quantities of the fat soluble vitamins. Like I wouldn't recommend that people take vitamin A supplements. We talked about beta carotene before because vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin and you're not going to excrete it in your urine and it can build up in your tissues and actually can reach toxic levels. So I don't usually recommend, I know a lot of people who are into bodybuilding take a lot of supplements, <laughs> but for, especially for senior citizens, um, I, I don't recommend high doses of individual vitamins. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. And the first day of fall was this month. Let's hope that none of us have any falls during this season. Thank you. Yep. And meeting for all.